Welcome. I am Sister Who. With me today, I have my friend Jim Bogman, and we were discussing about religious systems the other day. I, well, is, is it a system or perspective? Um, I'm guessing probably a lot of people have heard the word deism at some point. Uh, the basic definition I heard in the past was that it was the, the idea that there's that God really exists, that God created the world and set it in motion and has now stepped back and chooses not to be involved. Kind of like a clockmaker winding up the clock and then letting it run and not doing anything. Mm -hmm. I personally, I, I find this a little, um, in, in my understanding, which I'm guessing the next half hour is going to shift a bit, uh, I find it a little disappointing because it seems like the lazy person's theology um, that um, if God is uninvolved and it's up to us, it simplifies things and doesn't um, doesn't create any ongoing relationship. Uh, there's nothing that really has to happen one way or the other, and there's not in some sense, not even really any accountability. These are superficial perceptions, however. Mm -hmm. um, I'm guessing that your deeper understanding of deism is going to have a lot of light to shed on some of these points. I can try. Okay. What would you say are the ba is at the core of deism, and why is it a empowering, or how is it an empowering perspective today? Uh, I think the the way you described it at at least sort of the the logical factual level I think is correct. Um, I think the nuance I would put on it is that when you talk about um, the fact that God doesn't remember the supreme being, the mm -hmm. grand architect, whatever form you want to describe, um, when you talk about them not becoming involved, uh, in a way that almost uh, empowers us more because we can't just look to some supreme being to fix things for us. Okay. Uh, we have to go about our lives and do things for ourselves rather than expecting someone to come in and do things for us. Um, I think a lot of times people may see something like deism and they may think that because we don't expect a supreme being to reach down and do something for us that therefore we don't actually have a relationship with that being. Okay. And in reality, I think it's not necessarily that way. When you look back at the history of deism, it grew out of the traditional, more Catholic Christian uh, faith. Okay. But instead of uh, expecting there to be miracles and answers of prayers and that type of thing, uh, the, the the original deists uh, felt that uh, the that they should be doing things more on their own. Um, okay. You really have to look back to where this all started and how it started in the Age of Reason when... The 19th century? 18th? The 18th and 19th century. 18th century when it started. Okay. Um, after the, uh, I think it was after the Enlightenment, if I remember right, but I'm not a history scholar. Okay. I, knew, I knew it was in the Age of Reason, though, because... The Which was the, um, essentially the right after the beginning or, or right before the beginning of the United States? Around the beginning of the United States. Many of our founding fathers were actually deists. Okay. Um, Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, I believe, were two of the, the prominent deists, and, and okay. there were many others. Um, they is, is prayer a big factor for deists? Prayer, I think, is still a big factor, but it's not prayer in terms of praying for something to be changed or praying to... It's not to intercessory get prayer. Right. It's more... Um, honorary prayer or prayer recognizing and respecting the supreme being that created us. Um, gratitude, affirmation, right. um, acknowledgement of transcendence. True. And in some ways I think many deists, when they think of prayer, they don't think of a traditional prayer where you're maybe, you know, on your knees talking to a supreme being or something like that. Mm -hmm. I think in many ways, deists see the living of their life as a form of prayer. Um, okay. They see... the. the How deists, would you bring a prayerful quality to a uh, life as a deist? 
by understanding the world and doing your best to work within it and live a moral life uh, and in, in better, better the world as much as you can. Um, okay. The original Deus um, philosophy as far as you know, why we are here, so to speak, would be something along the lines of a supreme being created the world and gave us free will and created all of the physical rules and laws that govern nature and physics okay. and things like that. And then... And created a, a rather incredibly complex universe. Correct. I, I mean, we've been here how many thousands of years and we still haven't begun to understand it to any great degree. And from the DS perspective, one of the things that the Supreme Being wanted us to do is to understand where we are and what we are doing here. And so from that perspective, simply understanding the world, um, becoming better attuned to it, and learning how to work within it, to live within it, and better ourselves and those around us, is itself a form of prayer, because we're doing what the Supreme Being wanted us to do.